I'll tell you a little bit about how strings are actually encoded in a computer's memory, because this is an encoding that's shared across lots of different programming languages, lots of different computing platforms, and has become a universal way in which text is represented by computers. So it's good to know about. So first of all, the original encoding of text was called the ASCII standard, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And the purpose of this encoding was to assign a number to every letter, every digit, every piece of punctuation, and also some special symbols, some special values. So the way that number was assigned is that we organized all of the letters and numbers and important punctuation into eight rows. And eight rows can be encoded in three bits. A bit is either one or zero. So with three ones or zeros, we can encode eight different numbers. And then we had 16 columns or four bits to designate where in the row we were. So notice that all the digits are in the same row. All the capital letters span these two rows and the top two rows are special. So this layout was chosen to support sorting by a character code. And the center band row index is two through five, allow us to encode with not seven, but only six bits, a bunch of useful characters. So it gives you all the capital letters, it forgets about lowercase, it forgets about some less used punctuation, but it's enough to do some encoding if we need to use very few bits per character. And then the top two rows are what are called control characters. And they were designed to make sure that we could transmit messages from one machine to another. So they include things like the line feed, which we now represent as backslash n in Python strings, and the bell, which was meant to indicate that somebody should pay attention to a system. So all of these original ASCII characters are available in Python today and across many different platforms. As a demonstration, I can take the letter A and I can get its numeric value, which is 65. Now the way that we get the row and the column in that ASCII table is we take the hexadecimal representation of this number 65, which is four and then one, which tells us that if we look in the row at index four and the column at index one, we should find capital letter A. And there it is. Now, what about those special characters? Well, it turns out that they're still around, including the bell. So if you listen very carefully, when I print backslash A, it makes the system's bell noise or alert noise. Let me do that one more time. Okay. Uh, and if I print backslash in a bunch of times, then you'll see multiple different new lines printed out. So the ASCII standard was useful for encoding English, but the problem was that it didn't encode other languages. And so it was extended with what's called the Unicode standard. Now ASCII is a subset of Unicode, but Unicode also gives a number to lots of different characters other than just the letters in the English alphabet and a few types of punctuation. So here's just a snippet of the table from the Unicode standard, which gives some characters and their numbers in Chinese. There are 109,000 different characters in the Unicode standard for 93 different scripts. So a script is a writing system and they're organized by a script so that characters in the same script appear near each other in the table. And there's also part of the standard an enumeration of character properties. What's uppercase, what's lowercase, etc. They support bi-directional display order because Arabic is written from right to left, for instance, and there's a canonical name for every character, which is an English name that describes that character. So for instance, there's a Latin capital letter X is the name for X. Now, in addition to characters that appear regularly in languages, there are some symbols that are useful for computing. For instance, there is a smiling face and there's a frowning face. 
What are those? Well, there are these two strings, the smiling face string and the frowning face string. These can be part of strings. Let's take a look. So in order to access the Unicode standard, we're going to import a module called Unicode data, which has functions named name and lookup. For instance, A is Latin small letter A, and the name for X, Latin capital letter X. Lookup maps in the opposite direction. So if I look up white smiling face, I get the character that's a smiling face. You can make that bigger and try it again. There's our smiling face. What about an unhappy face? There's our frowning face. What else can we look up? Well, we can look up the skull and crossbones. There it is. We can look up the snowman because of course every set of characters needs a snowman. And you can put snowman inside a string with other stuff in there. Hello snowman. Now the Unicode standard gives a mapping between characters and numbers. The UTF-8 encoding of the Unicode standard lets us actually represent those numbers efficiently. So the UTF stands for UCS, which stands for Universal Character Set, Transformation Format. Unicode is a correspondence between characters and integers. UTF-8 is a correspondence between those integers and bytes. What's a byte? A byte is 8 bits. It can encode any integer from 0 to 255. So here are some bytes and here are some integers they encode. If I just have eight zeros, that's zero. If I have seven zeros and then a one, that encodes one. If I have six zeros and then a one and then a zero, I get two. And if I put two ones at the end, I get a three. So in general, this is a binary number and each digit in it represents adding two to some power. Two to the zero, two to the one, and this would be two squared. So if I had zero, 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 one, zero, zero, that would be the number four. UTF-8 is a variable length encoding. So it represents integers varying the number of bytes required to encode them. Any number less than 128 is encoded just with one byte, which means we can encode any ASCII value with just a single byte. Because remember that ASCII table that we started with only had two to the seventh or 128 different entries. In Python, the length of a string is measured in characters, but we can also get the individual bytes in a string if we want to look at the underlying representation. And that will have its own length measured in bytes. So here's our snowman. <clears throat> And the length of this string, snowman, is just one. However, if I take snowman and I encode it using this UTF-8 standard, then I will get three bytes because it takes three different bytes in order to encode the number that corresponds to the snowman character. As a result, if I want the length of that encoding, I will get Three. While we're here, let's just look at a couple of different things that we can do with strings. So strings have a large number of methods. dir is a built-in function that tells you all of the methods. Now try to organize all of this complicated stuff. But down here, when you actually get to English words, those are some methods on strings. So strings have things like capitalize, which will capitalize the string, and upper, which will make every letter uppercase. 